I just noticed how dramatic this lighting looks. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for a review of the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. <laughs> Emacs reached out to me a couple weeks ago about taking a look at their new version of the Tiny Hawk. No, I'm not talking about the Tiny Hawk S, but actually the Tiny Hawk 2. Um, this is the, the second generation, but the third iteration of the Tiny Hawk product line. Um, I actually happen to love the Tiny Hawk. Uh, I actually have three of them. I bought three of them, and when they said, oh, we're going to send you a new one, I was like, no, I've already, I've already got a bunch. I... I mean, yes, send it to me, but I, I don't want to fall in love with a new one because I want to keep loving my old one. That's why I don't have a Tiny Hawk S. Um, but they sent it out anyway, and I am so glad they did because I think I'm going to switch everything over to the new version. The biggest feature for me, I think, is that the camera that they've put in it is phenomenal. They've switched from the, the little micro format camera that they've been using, which I think is just some no-name, um, low-quality kind of micro camera, and they've adopted the Runcam Racer Nano. The Runcam Racer Nano is actually the, the camera that I use in my racing drones, like my full-size ones, my big ones. Here's a take a look right there. Right there. That's a Runcam Nano Micro Runcam Racer Nano. It's it is the camera that I use in all of my quads, and it's a phenomenal camera. Like you have this amazing wide dynamic range. You can fly it pretty much at night, um, and it looks beautiful. And that's one of the things that I hate the most about micro quads is that the video that you're seeing is rough or it's too narrow or it's super fish-eyed or something like that but on a high quality like actual FPV camera mm. talking about the camera we also have introduced a variable up tilt version of the Tiny Hawk as well so previously the camera had actually been fixed well it was not actually super well fixed it actually kind of started getting loose and flopping around inside the the drone like you always have to like fill it with hot glue or something like that or a bunch of people made like little 3d printed pieces that you could stick inside of that camera mount and keep it locked in there but now there's an actual mount with screws where you can lock the camera tilt off at a degree that you want so if you're racing one day you might bump it up to like 30 35 40 um, or if you're just doing like tiny whoop style flying where you're just cruising around real proximity hitting tiny little gaps and stuff you just bump it back down to 10 and that is not something that I thought I would really, really want in a drone like this, but it's actually really useful. And that's because it supports both 1 and 2S. On 1S, it pretty much flies like a slightly more powerful tiny whoop, and on 2S, it rips. Like, I am going to show you in a little bit the footage of me kind of experiencing flight with this thing for the first time, and I was a little bit blown away. Uh, so be looking forward to that, but know that the variable camera tilt really supports the 1 to 2S variances of the kinds of batteries that you can put in this drone. Not only have they updated the video from a camera perspective, but also from a VTX perspective. The Emacs VTX that's inside of it runs on 25, 100, or 200 milliwatts. So you can freestyle with it just like the big guys or take it to a tiny whoop race or a multi-GP race, whatever you want. And having the variance in those um, power outputs, again, speaks to the flexibility of the drone overall. Another thing that I thought was pretty cool was that there's now LEDs built into the frame of the drone. And those LEDs are not just LEDs, but they're actually responsive to motor output power. So the more thrust or the more that the motors are winding up, the more current that they're getting, the brighter those LEDs shine. They're like their new uh, Emacs um, Eco Series motors that have like the little LED rings or um, white noise boards that have responsive LEDs. It's the same principle, but it's built into the, the white ducts of the Tiny Hawk, and it makes the whole thing kind of glow red. It looks, it looks pretty cool, actually. 
One of the things that I've always loved about Emacs product lines is that they always come with these cute little USB chargers and this one's no different. And this one actually has one that is both for 1S and 2S. So you can see that this is a 1S battery, this is a 2S battery, both plugged into the same board running off of USB. And having both of those on the same board like available with four different ports means that I can go out to the field with a battery bank or do you know to my like tiny web race or whatever with a battery bank just plug that in and be charging my batteries all the while continuing to race with the tiny hawk and i thought that that was that continues to be a really good addition that something that emacs does that i've not seen everybody else do and finally i would still say that the most popular protocol for radio transmitters is still FR Sky, and this drone comes with FR Sky built in. You just plug in the drone, hold down the bind button for two seconds, and then bind it on the radio, and it's done, plugged in, ready to go, using Free Sky default channel mappings and everything. It's, I mean, it doesn't get any simpler to, to get it set up and going. So, I mean, if that's something that is interesting to you, that's, that's beneficial to you, it's great, because you just plug it in and go. You could be at a Tiny Whoop race, racing the Emacs Tiny Hawk by the end of the day. In spite of this, there are a few notes that I do want to make on the behalf of the Tiny Hawk 2. The first is that I don't think that the angle mode, or like what I would consider like the Tiny Whoop mode, is very well set up out of the box. There's some tuning changes that I would make um, for your personal drone before you get it out and try to use it in that way. I think that the, the angle mode is not aggressive enough and it doesn't give you enough input to really like ride it hard to race it. So I'll include in the description kind of some of the notes on how I made that fly better because what I have now I really like. Another thing to note, and that came with a big warning label, there's different PID profiles for 1S and 2S. So like here's this big old card that it comes with that shows you that the there's different PID profiles for 1S or 2S, whichever you're flying. Not a huge inconvenience, but it's something to be aware of when, and something that would be easily forgotten when you're switching back and forth. That being said, flying my Emacs Tiny Hawk on 1S indoors, I recently forgot to change it over to the 1S PIDs. I left it on the 2S PIDs and it flew pretty phenomenally. Like there was nothing wrong with it. So I think that could be a tomato tomato sort of thing, but just be aware that they expect you to have different PIDs for 1S or 2S. When I was running the drone on 2S, I've actually noticed that I'm running it at like 30% throttle and that's with a 40 degree camera tilt. The thing rips. I'm not saying that it's faster or anything like, but it, the thrust to weight ratio puts the power band way down low. So we might actually even have to consider putting in a throttle mapping or some sort of thing to lower that amount of output power or spread that output power through the whole band. Because like, I mean, I was like, just like barely at the bottom of my control, just like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You'll see a little bit more of that in a bit. And the final note that I wanna make is that you probably won't wanna do your tiny whooping style flying on 2s i mean when i was running 2s with it in ad angle mode like flying it like a tiny whoop it i mean it was 20 percent or lower throttle and there the resolution was not there and i was practically banging into the ceiling every time i pushed the throttle at all so what i've kind of been doing it is looking at it like 1s is like tiny whoop mode just like hardcore we're flying it around we're cruising we're bouncing off stuff we're going through tiny whoop courses we're bumping into people whatever and then 2S is more like, uh, it's more like the Baby Hawk. It's more like a three inch almost, where it, it really, really cruises, it really rips, but you're, you're pro you probably wouldn't take that and fly it in the place that you would fly a Tiny Whoop. So, <clears throat> so I think an unintended consequence, though beneficial result of having the one or two S options available for the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 is that this drone is, multi-faceted right we can change the camera angle we can change the output power we can run it indoors we can run it outdoors and the the flexibility of this platform is one of the things that's the most exciting for me it's something that i can just have it i can throw it in my bag with my goggles and my radio with a little usb charger and that's it and i can go and fly in any circumstance i could be flying it indoors at like a you know a bar or i could take it outside and rip some freestyle around a park and then 
for me, the flexibility of the drone as a ready to fly machine is something that is really, really cool for me. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take you to my first flight with the drone. Um, I recorded myself talking about my experiences, what I thought about it when I was flying it. Um, note that I have some range issues in the video and that is completely due to my own transmitter. I've since solved those problems and it's not having that problem anymore. But, and I, and I call that out in there, like it's my free sky, my radio is like five years old. It's got really bad antennas. It's probably burned out a board or two. Just don't worry about it. That's not an issue. So with that said, let's take it over to past Paul and see his first experience with the Tiny Hawk 2. Okay, I wanted to get out here and test this uh, for the first time. Um, I haven't flown this yet. Uh, this is the, again, the Emax Tiny Hawk 2. Um, I'm super stoked about the camera. The Runcam Nano is in here. Let me wipe that off now that I just smudged it. Um, it's the camera that I use in my normal like racing quad. So I'm really stoked about how that's going to look compared to like little micro cameras that are out there. Um, I'm going to fly it on one S and then I've also got the two S battery. We'll switch over to the two S PIDs and then we'll fly it like that. Um, but we're just going to cruise around and see what it's like. Oh, it looks so good. I love this camera. Oh, I feel saved. My uh, stock Tyrannus is pretty bad. Hello. One sec, I'll be right back. Yeah, so my stock Tyrannus uh, antenna and radio is starting to get really old. Like I pretty much don't even use it as a uh, free sky radio anymore. So it's really starting to get a little rough. So we'll keep it in range this time. That's not, has nothing to do with the Emacs. That's, uh, that's on my end. I need to, uh, I'll put a, like a crossfire or something in it. Can we turtle mode? Yep. I think I just clipped the ground there a little bit. Yeah, I've got more camera tilt than I really need. It's cruising, I'm already getting low batteries though, which is probably a factor of the cold. Since it's very chilly out here, it's probably in the, the 30 degrees. You notice a little bit of wind when I go over top. Let's try rate mode. So this is like tiny whoop mode. Needs a little bit of aggressiveness and I need to be able to tilt more like I'm finding myself like under correcting because I expect it to turn more than it does but I mean very capable uh, uh. need less camera tilt for a tiny whooping though this is great though and we'll go back to right Oops, I accidentally disarmed. <laughs> okay, so now before we unplug it, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to profile, PID profile two, save and exit, save and reboot. Okay, that's gonna take us over into 2S mode. I think that battery was really suffering because it's so cold out here. <clears throat> I don't think it has anything to do with like what the actual stock performance of the battery is gonna be. I think it's just really cold. <sighs> My fingers are already not working very well. 2S pack, plugging it straight into the same plug. It's got a balance lead on it now and not just the plug, but it's funny because the, the balance lead here is actually bigger than the, the actual power lead, which cracks me up for some reason. All right, so this is 2S. I'm leaving the camera angle nice and high. Oh yeah, she sounds peppy. Oh. 
Holy cow. This is Ooh. fast. Hold on. <laughs> I almost punched up into the tree there. Oh, crap. I left it armed. Oops. Okay, so that's, that's quick. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. It just takes right off, it's great. Chooches. How about some 2S Tiny Whip style? Oh my gosh, I'm running out like 20% throttle. Ah, it's too much power. And back to right. Oh my gosh, it's too much. I feel like I'm flying a freestyle quad. Oh gosh, I gotta stop doing that. My hands are too cold to work the camera right now. Oh, where'd you go, bud? Oh, that's a lot of tilt, hold on. It was like freaking to the moon. So let's try it like on a 45 degree tilt. I wanna see what that's like. Jeez, this is like 30% throttle. This is ridiculous. I can't even control this hardly. I'm like practically, oh, there goes the battery. <laughs> oh, I flattened that battery a little bit. Sorry there, little guy. Oh, Whew. oh yeah, she's a little warm. Oh, it feels so good on my hands, they're cold. Okay, so initial thoughts while we're out here in the cold, other than that it's cold. Um, I'm hoping that the battery life on that was due to the fact that it is so chilly and it's such a small battery. Um, but that did seem pretty short uh, compared to what I'm used to with Tiny Hawks. Like I've had, I own three Tiny Hawks and they last for like four or five minutes each, but that thing, I guess I was flying it at like 35, 40 degrees tilt. Like, I mean, I got this tilt cranked. I just kind of overdid a little bit on that end. Um, so maybe dropping it down and not flying it like a bat out of hell would uh, keep it in place a little bit. But I mean, it flies great, it flies fast. The, the picture quality is amazing. Um, I knew that when they said that they have a run cam uh, Nano 2 in there, it was going to be awesome. Um, and that definitely has, has lived up to its to what I believed it to be. So that's, that's probably one of my favorite parts is that it just, it looks like I'm flying my normal freestyle quad or my normal racing quad because I have the high, high quality picture coming from the, the run cam Nano. So yeah, I'm excited to, I'm going to get back on the bench. We'll uh, tear it apart a little bit. We'll try to find somewhere to fly it maybe indoors a little bit so that we're not just doing outdoors kind of high ribbon. We're going to do a little tiny whip style action, a little bit of course action, stuff like that, um, and keep putting it through its paces. Whew, let's get inside. Okay, now that we have that first reaction, I want to take it and fly it indoors. So we've kind of done our outdoor session. Now I'm going to take it indoors. I'm going to have Kyla chase the drone around. I'm going to set up the GoPro. We're going to fly around and, and use those new settings for the angle mode that makes freestyle or like tiny whoop flying work best. <laughs>
So in conclusion, with all of this, I'm super stoked with the Tiny Hawk 2. The variability, the flexibility of being able to fly it indoors, outdoors, 1S, 2S, variable camera tilt, variable output power, high quality camera for video, makes a very, very compelling experience for me. A product that I love, that I have three of already, that I, I paid for with my own money. I'm, I want to make that clear, like I didn't buy my three Tiny Hawks. I, or, I want to make that very clear. I did not have my Tiny Hawk sent to me. I bought each and every one of those. And taking that and iterating on it to make a more variable platform, something that is, is suits me in a bunch of different environments, is really exciting to me. So I'll keep flying my Tiny Hawk too. Uh, I'm headed to a Tiny Whoop uh, party with Jesse Perkins at Flight Test here in a couple days. I'm gonna be breaking it out there and ripping it around whatever course Jesse comes up with. Can't wait for that. But you know, for all of this, I'm super excited to, to be trying this out. Thank you very much to Emacs for sending out the product. Um, I hope that the this review, this overlook of the Tiny Hawk 2 was useful to you. And in the meantime, stay flying.